What up, gang? Uh, I want to talk about actually something I've been thinking about recently that I am using to help sort of navigate business, attention, effectiveness in the new world, our post-COVID world. And uh, specifically, so I'll, I'll start by setting this up. And so you may have heard the term or this phrasing that money wants to move, okay? Money wants to move. It doesn't want to be still. And this is very interesting. And I think the, the, the real, the truth underpinning that is that energy wants to move. Energy always wants to move. It can't be stagnant. That's sort of the definition. Energy is motion. Motion is energy. Um, energy wants to move. And money is an expression of energy to, some, to a very large extent. Money is an expression of energy. So money wants to move, energy wants to move. This has been true for a long time. People who understand the velocity of money uh, are, are often able to, to you know, get big wins in business, this type of thing. So money wants to move. It's true. But that's not the only thing that wants to move. And in fact, the way things have changed over the last 20 years, especially with tech, uh, two new things really want to move. All right? And they're connected. But the first is ideas. Ideas want to flow. They want to move. Ideas now want to move. And specifically what that means is that I remember the sentiment from, you know, years and years ago, but like people didn't want to share their ideas because they were afraid somebody else is going to execute them and make all the money. Like it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. I'm not sure this has ever happened in human history. Somebody shared an idea and someone else ran right out and took advantage of it. Like maybe in like, 1.0 everything, you know, thousands of years ago, somebody did this, but like, I don't think it's been relevant in a very long time. It's, it's an irrational fear is what I'm saying. But because of that type of prevailing mentality, people kept ideas close to the vest. Uh, but now with social media and the way posting is and the way, you know, quick video shares and all that stuff goes, ideas want to move as fast as possible. You got to consider there's an audience for all these things. So like ideas, who's the audience for ideas? It's people. Uh, ideas want to move because people want to kind of bathe in these things. They want to swim in the pool of ideas and uh, sort of enrich themselves. It, it, it affects the way we think, being exposed to new ideas. It sort of opens up new uh, possibilities of thought for us, opens up new connections in the brain, new, 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 new places for us to go and explore. So... The, uh, the idea about ideas wanting to move more and more as we're more interconnected, it makes total sense. And that's why, uh, you know, I struggle with this, this idea that a lot of like these super famous uh, video people are just kind of kind of idiots. You know, like what's the, what does that mean if they're not super exemplary people? They just happen to be the people with the channels who are popular doing dumb stuff. Like what does that mean? Well, you know, first it's early. You know, this is like the first generation of, of these types of creators and second, these things are mirrors into the human spirit and the human condition. So it actually does make sense to me that there's sort of like an averageness about this and about the, the signals that are out there, the ideas that are exchanged. But increasingly, there's an appetite for all of this type of content. And, and really what, what is underpinning all that is that ideas want to move, people want to consume them, they want to tear through this batch, then tear through another batch, see where that takes them. That, that's one way people are able to transport themselves to new places, to new, um, new positions in life, is by the exposure, continued exposure to new ideas. So ideas want to move. The other thing that wants to move, and I think this is almost more important now, it's very interesting, interesting to me, is that experiences want to move experiences want to move. So this might be something like these uh, digital nomads who've been popular for the last 15 years. These people who uh, work, they live all over the world. They travel around, but they have like a consistent brand. People know who they are and they're able to make money uh, in, in a, a continuous fashion. They may have a bank in the US or something, but they travel around to Bali and Singapore and Hong Kong and all these places and, uh, and do the, uh, you know, the, the nomad, digital nomad thing. Um, a lot of what those people are doing and what may has made them popular and what has made other people attracted to them is that they routinely share their experiences, which is a way of helping these experiences move. You know, a long time ago, it was enough for us to go on a vacation and to, I wanted to experience going to, you know, Koh Samui in Thailand or something like this. 
uh, you know, one of these exotic locations and seeing all that stuff yourself, feeling it, feeling your feet in the sand on the beach, feeling the waves, looking at the crystal blue water, this kind of thing. So it was an experience, you know, we primarily sought to have these experiences for ourselves. We, we kind of intrinsically thought that was the value of the thing. Well, it turns out we can, we can get a lot. Uh, it, it, it's not, it's perfectly acceptable to have experiences that you didn't, you know, in a secondhand manner. You didn't actually go there to experience it, but somebody else put together this thoughtful video, told you all about it. It's almost like having your own personal tour guide. And uh, so that's one way that experiences move now. And, it, and people are sharing like, like, like silly stuff. So, I mean, like, <laughs> there was a video recently of a dude doing his, uh, his morning espresso. And it's a very artisanal video, like a 45 second thing, showing all the different parts, naming them, telling like how long I do this, how I do that, like whatever. And he makes his little perfect cup of espresso. And this real artistic little video, but it, that, that is the sharing of an experience with uh, some ideas and stuff baked in, like, you know, knowledge about how to do this yourself. But even something, you know, menial like that, like our morning routine, right? Like sharing that experience is now valuable. And there's, there's um, people who are already big attention nodes talking about basic stuff and getting lauded for it and getting tons of attention for it because experiences want to move. And so this is what I have to remind myself all the time now. It's that, well, I want to, I want to create, you know, cool software and make it do cool things and have you know, interesting tools on the golden ratio typography website that you can use and gain insights from and wow, give you this feedback and like blow your mind and all this stuff. But the reality is I don't share the experience of building of that hardly at all compared to the product itself. I don't talk about a lot of the nuance. I don't talk about um, little breakthroughs. I don't really share the experience of it. And increasingly there's an appetite for what did you go through? What did you experience while building this thing? Like there's more to the story and people want that more to the story. So for me, it is no longer just good enough to create stuff and put products out there and send you emails and say, well, I hope you like it. You know, check it out. Uh, that's not good enough. It's not good enough for me. It's not good enough for anybody. Now we have to actually package it up as an experience and not, not, the, end, not the end result either. It's not, it's not like I have to package up this new product as an experience for you. I have to somehow package up my experience of building the product and what I went through and like the problems I faced and, and, and how I felt when this thing was solved or something like that. I, I need to package it up as a different kind of experience because that experience is the thing that wants to move. It's the thing that is going to create an emotional connection with a viewer, with a reader, with whatever, with the audience. And so this is important to think about. I encourage you to think about this stuff, uh, this stuff yourself. It's not good enough just to have ideas. You should probably be sharing them instead of keeping them close to the vest like anyone else is going to execute them. They're not. So ideas want to move and experiences want to move. And if you're operating on both, just building and not really sharing, you're, you're probably losing the majority of what you stood to gain in this new attention economy. It's just the fact. I don't love the way it's all working out. But I can acknowledge that it's different and I can acknowledge that people are being animated by a slightly different set of things than they were when it was just a pure like retail and advertising world. It's not like that anymore. And so we have to change our output to make it more accessible to the audience. We need to make it what the audience wants. The audience wants your ideas, wants your experiences, wants your energy. Uh, anything that you can move from your plate to theirs to share, uh, that's what people want. And uh, I, don't, I don't really, there's no judgment about it. It's just the way it is. And this is what you need to be thinking about if you want to build an audience in this new age. It's just, just the way it is. Take it easy.